All right, so in this episode, I'm going to talk about second degree price discrimination uh, through an example. Um, this is a, a relatively more um, a complicated problem than first and third degree price discriminations. And in, in fact, it is a hard problem, especially if you're dealing with a, a continuum of consumers, like a, a linear demand curve, for example. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to stick uh, with our uh, previous example where there's only five customers. I mean, a discrete number of customers. The number of customer doesn't matter really. Um, but we have a discrete number of customers. Um, I call them A, B, C, D, E. All right. And e each customer's are willingness to pay are known by the monopolist. The monopolist cannot distinguish the customers though, all right? I mean, uh, there's a person A, person B, but what is the uh, person A's willingness to pay? I don't know. Um, the monopolist knows the willingness to pay. It's like somebody, there is someone who is willing to pay $5 and there's also someone who is willing to pay $2, but who are those people? I don't know, all right? Uh, what the monopolist knows, let's say, is that some of the customers are more eager to pay higher prices for higher quality of good, all right? So I can produce uh, low quality, but at the same time, high quality of the same good, right? That, I mean, I don't know, the cell phone, a high quality and low quality. And I know that some of the customers' uh, willingness to pay will double. Uh, I mean, the customer A's willingness to pay will double, B, same, C, same but some other customer's willingness to pay will triple, all right? So in this example, D and E's willingness to pay uh, increases three times. So then the question is, again, I cannot distinguish uh, which customer is uh, which, uh, but what I can do, I can produce two different products. So this is the first time we're actually talking about monopoly with uh, more than one product. So the monopolist can produce two different products. Uh, here in this example is the quality that, is, is the, uh, 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 that, that differentiates these two products. So one is low quality, one is high quality. I produce both if I want to. I don't have to, but if, if I want to as a monopolist, I can produce both high and low quality, uh, put them on my store, and the customers come in, they check the quality, I mean, they check the products. Let's say they understand the quality, so it's obvious to verify the quality. And obviously there are potentially different price tags for those products. And so the customer who is willing to buy high quality will buy the high quality, and a customer if willing to buy the low quality will buy the low quality. And right? so I can differentiate the customers by offering them uh, variety of products. And here the variety is quality. Sometimes it can be quantity. For example, uh, you may want to buy one bottle of water, all right, because I'm, I'm just walking. I don't want to carry, um, you know, one pack uh, of, or, or one dozen of uh, bottled water. But if you are buying it for your home or for your office, you may want to actually bundle like uh, one pack of bottled water. And so you can, you know, charge different price as a monopolist, you can charge different prices. And so you can discriminate the customers, uh, again, with a variety of products. And there the, the variety depends on the quantity of goods. All right. So here there are some assumptions, obviously which is going to matter, uh, not the, 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 the sort of the logic of uh, the problem, but sort of the outcome uh, of, of the problem. So here, for simplicity, we assume that the costs are zero, right? Whether it's high quality or low quality, costs are just zero, okay? And then our standard assumption, which is the customers will buy as long as their surplus is positive. All right. So once again, the customers will buy as long as their surplus is a non-negative. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say positive, non-negative. All right. Well, here, one assumption is critical. Uh, so suppose that uh, the customer is indifferent between buying a high quality product and low quality product. All right. Um, so the customer will always um, calculate uh, his or her surplus. So what's going to be my surplus if I buy high quality? What's going to be my surplus if I buy low quality? So let's suppose 
Um, I mean, let's consider a case where the buyer is indifferent between high and the low quality products. Which one is she going to buy? Without loss of generality, we are going to assume that the customers, customers buy high, uh, high quality as long as they are indifferent between low and high quality. Okay, so that's that's the idea. That's the assumption, I'm sorry. All right, so then the question is, what is the, um, um, the, 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 the strategy of the monopolist? Should the monopolist produce only high quality? Um, should the monopolist produce only low quality? Um, if so, what should be the optimal prices? Uh, and then should the monopolists produce both high and low quality? If so, what should be the prices of those products? All right, so I am going to um, sort of solve it step by step. So let's say only low quality product is offered. We already did that, but it's, it's gonna be a, a recap. And then let's consider the case only the high quality product is offered. All right, so if only low quality product is offered, what should be the optimal price? Remember, if price is equal to $1, all right, well then the profit would have been, so if the price is one, all the customers are willing to buy this product at a price one. Price lower than one is, is not clearly profit maximizing because point, uh, say price is 80 cents, all five customers are still willing to pay, but if you charge a dollar, all five will also buy at that price. So why not charge a dollar rather than 80 cents? So in that case, the five people will demand it. So you're gonna sell each product at a price $1, and so you're gonna get a profit of five. If the price is two, however, A is off the picture. Again, there's no point of charging price between one and two right because a is off anyway so therefore charge a dollar a two dollars and we know with this assumption customer b will still buy the product because his surplus is zero uh, not negative so uh, four people will buy it and at a price two that means profit is eight it's higher so price shouldn't be one well what about three maybe monopolist can do better well, if the price is three, well, then three people will buy it. Profit is nine. And if it is four, then uh, two people will buy it, D and E, and the profit will be four times two, eight. And then if the price is one, profit will be only five. And so therefore the profit maximizing uh, price is P, um, let's call it L, all right? Um, is, is equal to $3. And how many product will be produced and sold? Well, three, because only C, D, and E will be able to buy it. We can calculate the consumer surplus, producer surplus, which we did. So I'm gonna leave that. All right, so, well, what if the monopolist only, by the way, only low and only high, right? So what if the monopolist offers only the high quality? Well, then, I have a ladybug in my uh, office. Okay, um, so if it is the only high quality, well then the price should never be lower than $2, right? So let's start with price $2. In that case, all five customers are willing to pay for the high quality product and the, um, the profit will, I'm sorry, not the profit. Yeah, the profit will be five times $2, so it's $10. However, if the price is, oh, there's no point for three because A is off the picture. So you should next charge four, all right? So if the price is $4, um, B, C, D, E can buy it. So four people, four times four, pi is 16. Okay, so four is better than two. Well, what if I charge $6? Well, then this time C, D, and E can buy it. So three people each pay $6, then the profit is 18. And then if the price is 
$12, right? There's no point of charging $10, for example. A, B, and C are off the picture anyway. I mean, they're not going to buy it at a price 10. Uh, D and E will buy it. But if you charge 11, both still D and E will buy it. And it's, it's even higher a profit. But 12, still D and E will buy it. Remember, the surplus is non-negative. So therefore, you should charge 12 at least uh, for this scenario. I mean, if you're not charging six, you should be charging 12. Uh, so the profit is two people will buy it 24, even better. Well, what if the price is 15 though? Well, only one person will buy it and profit will be 15. So the profit maximized, well, the maximum profit is 24, right? So the maximum, uh, I mean, profit maximizing price is $12. And then the quantity will be, um, you know, two units, All right? So the monopolist will actually ignore the other customers because the uh, high-end, the high uh, willingness to pay customers are, 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 are significantly willing to pay more. And so um, the monopolist will charge $12. So these are uh, the uniform prices, right? It's like, uh, I, I mean, I have one good and the same price for this good. I mean, you can't charge uh, one product, I'm sorry, let's say you have high quality only and you charge two different prices. This is like, I mean, the customer is gonna come in, two goods, both are high quality. One is $12, the other one is $5. I mean, of course I'm gonna buy the high quality, which is lower, right? It's, it's idiotic to charge two different prices for the same quality of good, all right? So, so these are uniform prices, but because there's only one product. So now let's, you know, extend the alternatives. And so there is both high and low product, low and high quality. Okay. So what should be the optimal prices? Well, this question is not always easy to answer because there's a lot of combinations you may have to check. It's like, oh, the price of low is this, price of high is this. Is this better than, or I mean, higher profit generating than price that, and price of low is that, and price of high is that. So there are a lot of combinations. It's hard to check all of them, all right? And so we need to either see a pattern in some questions a pattern, uh, uh, you know, arises naturally. Uh, not so much in this question. What we can do, nevertheless, um, you know, do some sort of analysis. Is like, what would the monopolist do, for example? Let's think about it. So the first obvious starting point is, well, let's say the monopolist charges $3 for low quality and $12 for high quality, right? I mean, remember the $3 for low was the profit maximizing, $12 for high was the profit maximizing, uh, if I s produce only one of them. Now I'm producing both of them, but let's say I charge still $3 for low, $12 for high quality. What would be the profit of the monopolist? Well, let's calculate that. Okay, so first I need to determine who would buy what. So. Here, remember, the price for low is three, price for high is $12. So consumer A, what would she do? Where her willingness to pay is a dollar for low quality, $2 for high quality. Both of them are expensive uh, because the low quality is $3 higher than her willingness to pay. And the high quality is $12, again, higher than her willingness to pay. So A will not buy it. All right. Okay, sorry. B, the customer B is willing to pay $2 for low quality, but the low quality price is $3, so she's not gonna buy it. Her willingness to pay for high quality is $4, but her um, w uh, price is, uh, the, the high for the high quality is 12, so it's still expensive. One thing that may confuse you, oh, but her willingness to pay is $4, and, and $3 is the price for the low. Mm, okay, $4 is uh, customer B's willingness to pay for if the good is high quality, which she can verify. All right, so there's one fancy cell phone and then one crappy cell phone. 
And so she is willing to pay $4 for this nice, shiny, beautiful cell phone. Um, but a uh, price of only the uh, the low quality cell phone is three dollars. Well, I mean, she she looks at the you know low quality. Um, you know what? I am willing to pay four dollars for the high quality. For the low quality, I'm not gonna pay four dollars or three dollars. I'm just willing to pay two dollars for that crap. All right. So that's the idea. So that's that's important. So she is not gonna be able to buy anything. I mean, she's not gonna buy it. All right. And then customer C. Customer C, her willingness to pay is $3 for low quality, $6 for high quality. She can't afford, I mean, she's not willing to pay for the high quality, but she is willing to pay for the low quality. So she's going to buy low quality. All right. So how much price, I mean, the profit the monopolist will get from... From A and B, customer A and B, the monopolist will get zero profit, right? Because they're not buying it. C is buying the low quality, so paying $3. So the monopolist is going to get $3 of profit from customer C. All right. What about customer D? Well, the customer D is willing to pay $4 for low quality, so she is willing to buy low quality. And the $12 for the high quality, she's also willing to pay high quality. Huh, so she's willing to pay for both high and low qualities. But the question is, which one is she going to choose? Hmm, all right, so here our standard assumption in economics kicks in, which is the customers always buys the product uh, that gives her the highest surplus. Let me repeat. The customers always buy, so if the customer has alternative, more than one product, all right, she basically, obviously, different utilities, different prices. So what she calculates, we don't have utility here. Instead, we have surpluses, which is kind of the same thing. So what she does, she calculates her net surplus. What is my willingness to pay minus the price I'm going to pay? That's the surplus. So whichever good gives her the same surplus, then she's going to buy that product. All right. So here, if you do the calculation, if customer D buys the high quality, her willingness to pay is 12. The price is 12. Her surplus is zero. However, if she buys the low quality, her willingness to pay is four. The price is three. So her surplus is one from the low quality. So she's going to buy the low quality. All right. And therefore, she's going to pay three dollars. All right. Well, what about customer E? Again, she is willing to pay for both low and high qualities. Which one is she going to pick? Again, calculate the surpluses. Customer E. If she buys the low quality, her surplus is 2, 5 minus 3. However, if she buys high quality, her surplus is 15 minus 12, 3. Higher surplus if she buys the high quality. So therefore, customer E will buy high quality. Okay? And therefore, she's going to pay $12. How much, therefore, the profit will the monopolist generate? Well, 12, third of uh, 15, 18 dollars. Sounds good? All right. Well, the question is, um, can the monopolist achieve higher profit than this? The answer is yes. The monopolist can do better than 20, uh, 18 dollars uh, of profit. All right. Example. The monopolist charges... Um, let me think about it. Okay. The monopolist charges $3 for the low quality, but the monopolist charges $11 for high quality. All right. So the high quality is lower than this scenario. Okay. So this is the new scenario. Under this, what is the monopolist profit? Let's calculate that. Okay, once again, customer A and B. What are they gonna do? Which product are they going to buy? 
the same thing, right? Uh, a has willingness to pay, well, they are definitely not willing to pay, A, B, C are not willing to pay $11. And A and B are willing to pay at most $2, I mean one and two respectively. So therefore A and B will not buy it. Right, that's obvious. Customer C, she's not willing to pay $11, but she is willing to pay $3 for low quality. So she's gonna buy low quality. And the monopolist, therefore, will receive $3 from this customer. And so the profit from her will be $3. Good. What about customer D? All right. Customer D, now, if she buys the low quality, her uh, willingness to pay is 4 minus 3. Oh, I'm sorry. Why am I looking at it? Uh, 4 minus 3, because this is the price. Uh, 1 surplus. However, if she buys the high quality, 12 minus 11, one surplus. Huh, so customer D is now indifferent between buying low quality and buying high quality. Which one is she gonna be picking? That's now our assumption kicks in. Whenever the customers are indifferent between buying high quality and low quality, let's suppose without loss of generality, uh, she's going to buy the low quality. Um, I'm sorry, high quality. Okay, so therefore, D is going to buy high quality. Good. How much is she going to pay? Well, she's going to pay $12. Good. Well, what about customer E? Same, right? I mean, she was willing to pay $12, but now she's going to pay $11. Obviously, I mean, if you calculate the surpluses, it's the same. And so, uh, she's going to buy high quality again high quality, and therefore she's going to pay $12. So if you add those numbers up, 24 plus uh, 3, 27. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know why I make those mistakes. The price is not 12, it's $11. Sorry. And so 11 plus 11, 22, plus 3, 25. Okay? So, clearly higher than 18, so monopolists could actually do better. All right, well, one obvious question is, what is the optimal pricing, right? Uh, well, clearly monopolists should produce both high and low quality. And uh, the pricing, well, there are tons of different um, cases. What if, for example, price of low is two dollars. Why is that? Well, because the three dollar uh, A and B are not buying. If, if the monopolist makes it three dollars, uh, two dollars, I'm sorry, now B will also buy it. So one more customer. Um, but then what should be the pH, the high price, the high product price? Well, if it is still 11, so the low quality is $2, but high quality is 11, the D guy is going to switch back to the low quality. Why? Well, because if she buys the low quality, all right, uh, her surplus is 4 minus 2, 2. But if she buys the high quality, her surplus is 12 minus 11, which is 1. So she's going to strictly prefer the low quality. All right? So she's not indifferent. She strictly prefers low quality. So you're going to lose that $11 profit uh, because of that D person. So if you charge $2, well, and if you want the D guy buying high quality, you should be charging $10, right? Uh, but if you calculate the profits here, I think I did that calculate, it's 24, all right? So, but the point is there are tons of different cases. So some questions, it's kind of relatively more obvious to see the result. In this example, it's not mainly because we have this um, swing voter in a sense. It's like the she swings back and forth between high quality and low quality, all right? So she, yes, loves high quality, um, but the thing is if the prices are, uh, are, are such that she is going to think that the low quality is actually offering a better deal for her. So she's going to go for low quality. Right? So low quality is, yes, it's low quality, but the price is so good, so she can't resist and buys, prefers to buy the low quality. So we have this swing 
uh, I mean, it's like a player who may go back and forth between low and high quality. So it makes the problem a bit more complicated. Right? So for that reason, we're not going to solve what is the monopolist optimal pricing, etc., etc. It is, in fact, something we, for example, teach in masters and the PhD levels, like monopolist screening problem, but not in this course. The bottom line of all these analyses is the following. The monopolist can actually may not distinguish the customers and may not categorize the customers like students, non-students. I mean, there is no IDing for customers' willingness to pay for uh, quality, right? I mean, you can't ID people. Oh, this person should be willingness uh, to high. I mean, willingness to pay is very high. Uh, can you verify? It's like, well, obviously everyone is going to uh, say, oh, actually I'm not willing to pay high. Uh, because they know if they if the monopolist knows they are willing to pay high, the monopolist will charge them high price. So everybody will probably mimic as if they are uh, having a low willingness to pay. So therefore, you cannot really ID or categorize the customers. So what you can do, you you can offer them alternatives. All right. Here, the simplest case: two goods, high and low, or, or maybe quantity. You know, one bottle of water versus 12. So I know they have different willingness to pay. I offer two goods, two different prices, and just let the customers choose. All right? Then obviously the question is, what is the optimal pricing? That's a tough question. And hopefully if you take, I don't know, advanced micro or maybe an MA or PhD level microeconomics, you'll learn how the optimal pricing works. But that's basically it about second degree price discrimination. And I hope it was clear. All right. See you in next video.